thank you for joining us at Prophecy in the News this week. I'm Kevin Clarkson, your host. We're continuing an interview with Bill Weiss. He's the best-selling author of 23 Minutes in Hell, a book that was published uh, 10 years ago, and we're celebrating the 10th anniversary of it with an updated uh, edition of the book with four new chapters and contents because Bill has been led into a ministry of sharing this around the country, opens the floor up for questions, and he's found recurring questions about the whole substance of hell. And he says most of the resistance and skepticism, surprisingly, has come from within the church community. And uh, they want, you know, and we do want everybody to be saved. But uh, the scripture's clear and Jesus spoke about hell. But you also have a second book, uh, mm-hmm. Bill, and welcome. Prophecy in the News. Thank you, Pastor Kevin. Again, honor to be with you. Well, it's Thank good you to so have much. you. You certainly didn't uh, select this kind of a path. I know you were a no. realtor, uh, minding your own business, and, and God sort of plucked you one night and gave you a vision that uh, sent shivers down your spine and changed your life. That's right. I was happy doing what I was doing, selling real estate, and the Lord definitely pulled me out of my comfort zone Yes. and to sharing the, the word of truth with people as far as uh, the reality of hell. So it was uncomfortable for me, but my wife and I are honored to do it now Amen. and share because a person's soul is so v- precious. Well, you know, the ultimate piece of real estate, when it's all said and done that anybody needs, that's is right. a piece of ground, a plot that's about six feet uh, long yeah, or eight feet right. long by, you know, four that's feet right. wide. That's right. And that's this other book, What Happens When I Die. Right. Because unless yeah. Jesus returns, and we obviously at this ministry believe it's going to be within our lifetime. We do, And too. we're trusting that we're going to be those who are changed, not sleep, but yes, changed. Yes, absolutely. That's our, our great hope. But... Uh, for those who have died through the centuries and those who will die uh, before he returns, um, we end up in a box, our bodies. That's right. So that is a question. What happens, this book says, when I die? And I believe you told me that there are 34 near-death stories uh, in this yes. book. Yes. This is a, a book that gives a lot of evidence that there is an afterlife. You know, I share, first of all, 34 true stories of people that have had either near-death experiences clinical death experiences or a vision or a dream from God and what they saw after they died or were slipping out of the body and almost died and many of them saw heaven many saw hell there's actually thousands of people and there's many books written about this I just picked 34 stories that seem to be line up with scripture I want you to say that last line again that I they line up with that line up with scripture exactly that's what's important because i want to assure our viewers because the immediate pushback some would have and i would be one of them you know there's so many stories floating out right. there and exactly of course the big knock is everybody's going toward the light right yeah i mean everybody yeah. all dogs do go to heaven right right uh, and so we're all headed toward the light but you address that and you actually i believe told me that mm-hmm. you have a balance here of stories of those who came back but they were nearly in hell and others were right it's about ba- balance of stories in here and like i said th- these are people that line up with scripture what and selected what criteria had to be met for you to include well them? if there's a lot of people who say things that are not in the bible yeah so you know right away well that's not scriptural they had a they just had a, a false vision mm-hmm. uh, a bad dream it wasn't Too much really pepperoni pizza yeah something like that you know uh they were deceived by uh-huh. the devil and so forth. So there are a lot of deceptions out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. But there Satan are. Satan mas- masquerades. Right. As an angel of light. Exactly. So, but some of these people, they, many of them really had a legitimate experience. And it's interesting, the ones that saw hell, almost all of them, either became missionaries, got into the full-time mis- ministry, and uh, all of them became a Christian after they seen hell. Now, if I'm hearing you right, not necessarily the ones that that came back after a glimpse of heaven, but the ones who really saw the dark side, right. they ended up going into ministry. That really inspired them. When they saw how severe hell is, they didn't want their family or friends to go there, and they saw the value of a person. They became a rescuer. Exactly. I don't remember who first said it, but one of the, one of the famous preachers of old said, you know, if he could start a school of ministry, the best thing he could do would be if every, every candidate for ministry could spend five minutes in hell. That's right. That's right. That's uh, I know. hell's very sobering. You know, we it really did a show on it. But you said there are uh, maybe yeah. three key reasons mm-hmm. it's important for Christians to think about hell pretty right. often. Right, because people say, "Hey, I'm a Christian. I'm not going to hell. Why do I need to hear about it?" Yeah. Three reasons. Number one, when you understand how severe hell is, you'll be much more appreciative of your own salvation from what you were saved from. What you're saved from, not right. just saved to. Right. 
Because again, a lot of people believe in annihilationism or universalism mm -hmm. or soul sleep, many false teachings. But when you understand how severe hell is, you'll thank God he saved you from this horrible place. Number two, it causes us all to walk more in the fear of the Lord as Christians. A lot of Christians live compromised lifestyles, backslidden and playing around with sin. You know, when Jesus said in Mark 9, 47, if your eye offends thee, which means causes you to sin, he said, pluck it out. It's better for you to enter in life maimed than in the hell fire. So in Proverbs mm. 16, 6 says, by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. That's right. So it's the fear that keeps us walking the straight walk. Now we are to cry out, Abba, Father, Daddy, Father. But at first we have to have a healthy reverential fear of Almighty God Amen. and who he is. He's a holy and a just God not just a loving God. Amen. So it'll cause you to walk that straight walk when you understand how severe hell is. And then number three, it'll give us all more of a passion for the lost, a desire to witness. You know, I think it was Bill Bright said only 2% of Christians even bother to witness. Yet Jesus told us in Mark 16 to go into all the world and preach the gospel. That's right. That's for all of us. But so many, rather they fear man rather than fearing God and they don't open up their mouths. Well, this inspires you to to want to share the truth with people because when you see how severe it is, again, you will think, I can't let my family go there. I've got to do something. So what it does is each day that when you get up, you pray and say, Lord, use me today that you could put me in front of somebody that I can share your truth with. Not beat them over the head with the Bible, right. not chase them down on the street, but just be more sensitive to the Holy Ghost and watch for those opportunities that you can share the truth with people. See, that's the heart God wants us to have because Amen. he wants everyone to be saved. And certainly it's not an option for us to think, well, they're going to go to heaven anyway because they're not. Right. They don't know Christ. The other side of that is I've noticed a lot of Christians in their witness approach, they don't realize it, but they are uh, taking the right to say no for someone else. That's true. Maybe you see a real skeptic or someone that you couldn't envision being a Christian and you're going, oh, I'm not going to talk to them they wouldn't listen anyway right you don't have the right to say no for them that's true and who would have who would have witnessed to Saul of Tarsus that's right it's a he's good going point. around throwing Christians into prison and you know watching them be killed for their yeah. faith but look who God plucked we have we don't that's know that's right we have found some of the toughest people on the exterior have become the softest and have been able you, to win them over the easiest yes once you really take the effort unbelievable unbelievable that. yeah well uh and Boy, I, 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 this, this is, is of interest to me because we can't talk about all of them, but not only the stories. You said that you deal with uh, some important reasons. I think you said seven. We mm -hmm. might do a, one or two, but that Christianity is unique and also credible, believable. Right. Can That's you right. tell us about yeah, some Yeah, because people reasons? say, why should I believe Christianity over any other religion? Yeah. What's the difference? Well, there's, there's at least seven, but first of all, no one else has risen from the dead. You know, uh -huh. Bill, Billy Graham said this. I thought that was a good quote. He said, uh, most of the re world religions are based on philosophical thought, except for four, Judaism, Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity. He said, these four are based on personalities, mm -hmm. but only Christianity claims resurrection for its founder. That's good. And that's a big difference. And there's much proof of the empty tomb. Oh, they never is. found the body. Yes. And they were searching for that body. You know, the Pharisees wanted to find it, and the Romans, they never found it. For 2,000 years, they still haven't found it. Tomb's still empty. That's right. So no one else has risen Amen. from the dead like Christianity claims. And that's number one. No one else died for our sins. Yeah. No other God that has claimed that they've died for our sins. He did. Number three, the, uh, all of the religions talk about what you must do to earn your salvation. And even then, you have no assurance of it. If they even believe in an afterlife like a heaven or hell. Where Christianity, you can't earn it. It's a free gift. No other religion has been scrutinized like the Bible has been scrutinized by literally thousands of scholars have dissected every word in the Bible and never found one discrepancy. Mm -hmm. According to the top scholars, and I name a lot of the scholars in my book that have de dedicated their entire life to researching and never found one discrepancy. And also, most of the world religions are based on one man's vision or one dream one person had. Mm -hmm. Joseph Smith. And they Mormonism. follow a, a whole religion is based mm -hmm. on that. The Bible's not like that. It's not, at all. It's not one man's re religion or one man's book. It's a collection of 66 books written by 40 different authors over a 1,500-year period on three different continents in three different languages. Amen. And all of them wrote about the same thing, about Jesus Christ. And also, the d difference in Christianity is no other religion predicts the future. 
and Christianity gives 300 prophecies about Jesus in the Old Testament. The first time he came. Exactly. And then, of course, a lot in the New. So it's full of talking about the future. And so more reasons than that, but that's, that's enough to believe why well, Christianity that's is that's credible. That's fantastic. I mean, we're talking to Bill Weeson. We're talking about this book, What Happens When I Die. And you may think, well, that's just a bunch of soft, squishy stories about people and their experiences. But you heard the apologetics he just addressed. And uh, that information's in here as well. You can get this from Prophecy in the News. You call the 800 number on the screen right now or go to our website, prophecyinthenews.com. And you can order at the online bookstore or talk to one of our helpful assistants and place your order. Uh, this book is right now available for $14.95. It came out in 2013, um, plus shipping and handling. Also, you can get uh, Bill's book that preceded this and really uh, became a platform God gave him to share in a lot of places. It's called 23 Minutes in Hell. It's, uh, the first part of it's about his own experience of a vision of hell. But then he corroborates with over 150 scriptures, uh, everything that he saw, and just really uh, shows the solid biblical case for the doctrine teaching of hell and why it needs to motivate us. This one at the same place where you find it for 15.95 plus shipping and handling. Well, you pick 34 stories in what happens when I die. Right. We're not going to review 34 stories because they'd need to get the book to find that out. But maybe if you want to take uh, a couple of each. Uh, sure heaven and then hell and, and, and maybe point something out and then we want to maybe talk about the doctor that uh, was such an incredible person who was totally convinced despite all of his atheism after hearing so many stories and investigating right it's interesting to read all these stories but uh, one particular one uh, uh, actually Dr. Whitaker who's been on the TV before uh, he was an atheist and he was very successful in the world and he thought, what is God? I don't need God. That was his thoughts. But he, had, he got a disease. He was dying in the hospital. And as he was slipping out of his body, he thought about this one friend that was a Christian. And he said, as he was slipping out of his body, he was going down this dark, dark tunnel. And he said it was getting darker and darker. And he said, I was in absolute, total terror. And I knew, he said, if I slip all the way out of my body, I'll never get back. And he thought, what is saved? What is saved? Well, the doctors resuscitated him, and the moment he was resuscitated, he called for his friend that was a Christian, and he got saved. Mm. This was a hardened atheist who was successful in life. Many examples like that in the book, that people, it really radically changed their life once they got born again, and once they got a glimpse of hell. Right. Uh, many others uh, that have seen hell. There was one man that uh, fell off a uh, a scaffolding and he drowned for 45 minutes he was dead anyway God showed him the lake of fire which nobody's in yet he said it was empty but he saw this massive lake with flames raging high up in this uh, open nothingness and he said it was just so awesome to see this he was terrified beyond anything and someone was praying for him and so Jesus brought him back to life and he became a Christian it's interesting you said nobody's in yet, and let's, let's clarify for yeah. you know, our listeners the fact that you know, that lake of fire is, is at the end of time right. when the great white throne judgment does happen in Revelation 20. And right. It's like there's really two hells in a sense. Mm -hmm. The current hell, or Hades, which is the Greek word for the current hell, was down deep in the earth. It's kind of a holding cell, would right. you say? Right. And there's, there's 49 scriptures that talk about it being down deep in the earth. So mm -hmm. it's pretty clear in the Bible where it's at. But then Revelation 20, 12 through 15 says, death and hell, or Hades, deliver up the dead that are in them. And then they're cast into the lake of fire. Right. That's the future hell. But there are people now in the current hell. Do we have any sense of where that might be? The lake of fire? Mm -hmm. There's only one hint in uh, Matthew 25, 30. He said, it'll be cast into outer darkness. Outer darkness. So where's that? Deep space? Oh, we don't know. The Bible doesn't really say. Edges of the universe. Who knows? Right. Right. God knows. Right. So, but the, uh, other interesting people, mm -hmm. there's people that, that saw heaven. Uh, Don Piper, 90 Minutes in Heaven, Dr. Gary Wood, and others that have, were in car accidents and actually physically died. And they were Christians and they went to heaven. And there's many of these people, but they all say the same thing. They saw their families. Their families greeted them. They all looked perfect. Uh, they, they saw the golden streets. They saw the gate of pearl. They saw uh, a beautiful city. Uh, a jasper wall surrounding the city. People were happy. They saw landscaping, beautiful trees and so forth. And people were excited and happy and singing praises to God. 
there was activities going on in heaven and so forth, much uh, activity in heaven. It wasn't just a place that you just sit around and uh, play a harp. There was things going on in heaven and uh, so forth. So I give all the scriptures in one chapter all to do with heaven and then all the scriptures to do with hell. So you can, the Bible paints a picture for each one. Uh, but the people's stories are fascinating to listen to. Fantastic. Um, well, you mentioned a uh, atheist doctor, not the one who had the death experience, right. but really a hardened cynic and a, and a critical thinker who, you said, I believe, examined several thousand cases. Yeah, Dr. Maurice Rawlings, actually. And uh, he was an atheist, famous cardiologist. Cardiologist. So he's dealing with people that are near a heartbeat away all right. the time. Yeah. And this is actually one of his patients was dying. And as he was slipping out of his body, he was screaming, hmm. Doctor, I'm in hell, I'm in hell, I'm burning. I'm and he was in agony. And, and uh, he wanted the doctor to try to resuscitate him. And somehow he got that out. So the doctor managed to resuscitate him. And the guy came back to life and he ended up giving his heart to Jesus. Well, so did Maurice. The man on the table. Right. Yeah. He got saved. He got saved. Dr. Maurice Rawlings didn't right then. Yeah. But he investigated so many uh, stories and found out there were so many saying the same things. The ones that were not saved, that they saw hell, they were terrified mm -hmm. beyond anything they could ever explain. So he started realizing, hey, there really is a heaven and a hell after he investigated all these 3,000 cases. And then he gave his heart to Jesus, became a Christian. You know, anyone like myself that's a pastor or I suppose Christian uh, medical workers, we've all experienced the difference in a room when there's a person that's going home. Yes. And there's a person that's not ready. Right. It, it's an eternity of difference in that room. Mm -hmm. Right. It's he talked about that in several cases. That people were screaming in terror as they said, there's demons ready to drag me off into hell. Stop them. Make them go away. A lot of his patients were screaming that as they died. Does Dr. Rawlings describe like the defining moment when he actually kind of got it and crossed the line? Was there some just the cumulative weight of all of this or was it any one specific episode that he encountered that you know what what actually forced him to his knees you know he may have i, I he's got so many books i didn't read so he's that. written about his own yes mm -hmm. and uh, he had a near-death experience himself okay so i i know he touched on that in in his near-death experience but i think that helped inspire him also uh you I'm mentioned as as we were talking before we came on bill about you know uh, Kind of a singular feature that emerged when you dealt with suicide uh, experiences. Mm -hmm. would, would you tell me more about that? And well, we've had many people write us that read our book that were going to commit suicide. One lady was online searching for ways to commit suicide. This was in England. Mm -hmm. And she came across our video and our book and so forth and read it and watched the video and ended up giving her heart to Jesus and not committing suicide joined a church and now she's involved in the church we've had people come so up to good. us at uh, churches and so forth that say they were going to commit suicide one lady we were in New Jersey and her friend came up to us and said Bill my best friend was over visiting me last night came over and said I'm going to commit suicide tonight I'm done and she says before you do that read his book so she made her sit down and read my book. Hmm. Well, the phone rang and her friend said, are you going to church tomorrow? Because Bill Weiss is going to be speaking in our church <laughs> in New Jersey. This wow. New Jer and so she said, you won't believe it, but Bill's going to be at our church. Would you come to church tomorrow? The lady came to church, went forward and gave her heart to Jesus. And she came up to me at the table and she said, I would have been in hell last right night now. Yeah. if you wouldn't have come to this town. And so it really uh, inspires my wife and I when we hear stories like this to keep going because it affects people's lives. There was also, I think, a component of your observation that suicide, uh, suicidal people about maybe their, their directions were never toward heaven when they were. Yeah, actually, Dr. Maurice Rawlings pointed that out. The ones that were tried to commit suicide and they're on their deathbed and so forth, uh, none of their experiences were pleasant ones. They were all going towards hell, everyone that tried to commit suicide. Okay. That's what he had pointed out. He thought that was interesting. That, that's, uh, that's a heavy thing to consider. Yeah. Um, I, I want to just take the time that remains. I think we've, we've just got a little time, maybe eight minutes or so. But um, blow apart this whole idea of, um, you know, toward the light. Uh, mm. You know, the book came out back in the early right. 90s or whatever. But, again, all dogs go to heaven. Everybody has these wonderful experiences, which you've said isn't the case. Right. 
But to hear a lot of people talk about after death experiences, they're all good. They're all yeah. going toward this light. We're shuttling toward warmth and love and and right, you hear that from people that yeah. you know that we're not even a Christian. Yes. So they assume that, see, afterlife is going to be wonderful and yes. bliss for all of us. So what do you uh, find as you delve well, into that? One of the things that Dr. Maurice Rawlings pointed out was a lot of his patients said that. But he found out, and I also have found the same thing as him. You know, Ecclesiastes 3 and Ecclesiastes 12 mm -hmm. talk about the spirit of man returns unto God. doesn't say just the Christian. But I believe then what God's saying is that all spirits return to him. But then they finally, they're going towards this light. And it's mm -hmm. beautiful and it seems all peaceful and wonderful because they're going towards the light, Jesus. But then when they get there, Jesus points to another direction for them to go. And then Those the ones... says, I never knew you. Right. And then the ones that, that experienced that light, some of them d went further than the others. Those that just didn't get that far, they came back into their bodies and they thought everything was wonderful. The ones that went further and got to Jesus, they were told to go to the left and they started traveling down this long, dark road and it was getting hotter and hotter. Wow. And then they described the demons and the torment and the screams and the fire. So I believe that that's one reason. Number two, Satan can appear as an angel of light. So I believe a lot of people that see this light can be deceived by the devil appearing to them as an angel of light. Right. And there's one case like that in my book. Uh, Dr. Howard Storm, he pointed that out. He said he saw this light and these uh, people were saying, come with us, follow us. And it was all pleasant and seemed right. So he started following them. But as it got further and further down the road, they started heckling him and saying, come on, come forward, come on. And then they started dragging him. Then they, they, these demons grabbed him and started beating on him. So in the beginning, they were deceiving him. Mm -hmm. And he was going in that direction, thinking it was a, a peaceful way and light. But it wasn't. It was the devil that deceived him. So, so that's the two different cases, I believe, that people can be deceive, deceived in that way. We, we talked about this in our last uh, show, but I know we sometimes have... Uh, viewers that don't get the opportunity to see both of them would you just address again uh, because it happened to you about a, a so-called out-of-body experience and a, and a or even an after-death experience yours wasn't after death mm. but um, would you yeah I know there are good uh, people who love the Lord and they love the Bible and they they get very uncomfortable with mm -hmm. any thought that's kind of off of orthodoxy and we believe we're solid right. orthodox but we also believe that God is a God of uh, not only a written page, but of life and experience. So right. would you address that sure. issue? It was concerned to some people. You know, Acts 2.17 says, In the last days your old men will dream dreams, mm -hmm. and your young men shall see visions. So there's many people that have had visions or dreams because God has to give them because he just said in his word that he would do that. Yes. And we know we're in the last days. And so my experience was just a vision. And God can take you in a vision wherever he would want. He took Ezekiel in chapter 8 from Babylon to Jerusalem. He took Abraham and brought him forth abroad in Genesis 15. He brought Paul and John to heaven. And Jonah, in Jonah 2.2, it says, In hell he cried out. That's right. So there is someone in the Bible that did see hell. And so God can take you in a vision wherever he would like. Now, I would have much rather chosen heaven, but God chose to show me hell in a vision. Yeah. I wasn't condemned to hell. It was just a vision. And I, I don't fit the scenario of Luke 16 where they say, you know, send back Lazarus and then say, you have the scriptures. So, Bill, why would God send you? I don't fit that scenario. Number one, I wasn't dead. Mm -hmm. This was just a vision. Number two, I'm not telling anyone to believe my experience. I'm just a signpost to point them to the scriptures right. and by those be persuaded. So that's the difference. And uh, so God has given many people. I've met many that have had visions and dreams of heaven or hell. It's just God is fulfilling his word. Yes. And earlier, again, in another show, so you could say it again for those that missed it, you cited the fact uh, of a scripture in Job, you know, that, that God uses these uh, visions to reveal right. himself. Job 7.14, he says, he scares me with dreams and terrifies me through visions. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 21.2, he was given a grievous vision. Job 4.14, Eliphaz was given a vision that caused his bones to shake. So you can have a grievous, terrifying, bone-shaking vision. So I believe this fits that category. And, and we've alluded to the fact that those who have not heard the gospel, if they do respond to the light they're given through conscience and creation. That's right. 
we know of cases where God maybe reveals himself. Uh, you know, we've all heard, yes. I think, stories from the Muslim world behind the, right. whatever we want to call the veil, where the gospel cannot go, missionaries are not allowed, mm -hmm. can't have a church anywhere. Right. And we know there's an underground church, but right. not every person living in that nation is able to know somebody that could tell them how to be saved. But they tell experiences of having dreams and visions. Many. Christ coming to them and right. speaking. We've heard many of those stories. So God is gracious and merciful and loving. He's trying to get through to everybody. Amen. He's not trying to keep people out of heaven. He's trying to get them in. Right. You know, so he'll give them the dreams or visions to keep back their soul from the pit, as Job 33 says. Now, I shouldn't, as a, as a Christian, just say, well, God's going to send them dreams, so I don't need to go or send a missionary. No. Should I say that? No, because he's commanded us. He's like commanded he said us. In, in Mark 16, go into all the world and preach the gospel. It wasn't a suggestion. It was yeah. a command. That's kind of a last resort, isn't it, when every other door may be closed? Right, that's why he gives us the TV and radio and internet yes. and missionaries. He does everything to get through to people. And he will use as a last resort dreams or visions. Yes. So he's merciful. He's trying to get people to heaven. Well, we have just under a couple of minutes, Bill. I want to ask you two quick things. I want to ask you, has the vividness of your vision receded with time? Or would you actually be able to, you know, as you just kind of close your eyes and recall it, is it as vivid and as powerful today and secondly just because of time could you tell us what do we do with this information and how do we receive Christ sure uh, it hasn't uh, receded at all diminished or anything no it hasn't diminished at all in any area other than the pain part that I did feel the Lord allowed me to feel a small amount of pain mm -hmm. and and that part has diminished but the memory of what I saw the screams I heard the stench and the hopelessness I'll never forget that hopelessness so no, it's remained with me all this time and Did God's it. given me the grace to try to get it across to people. But you know, people have to understand, you know, God, this is a warning. It's a message of love because it's a message of warning. So people have to understand that God's trying to get their attention to keep them out of hell. But I just can address the people. Would that yes, be the best please. thing to do? You know, if, if you're a person that you don't, you're not familiar with God, he's a loving God. He died a horrific death on the cross to keep us out of hell. Amen. He's not a mean God. He's not sending people. He's given us a free will to choose. You have a choice to make. Do you believe his word or don't you? If you say, no, I don't believe it, you send yourself to hell by right. your own words condemning you. He's trying to keep you out. You have the choice right now to decide. Do you want to believe in Jesus and receive him as your Lord and Savior? If you do, your name can be written in, in his book. And just say this prayer if that's in your heart to do. Say, dear God in heaven, I know I've sinned. I can't save myself. But I believe you sent your son to die on a cross for me. That he was crucified, died and was buried. But that he rose again. I ask you to forgive me my sins. I'm sorry. Come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. You are the Son of God. Thank you for dying for me. Amen. Thank you for taking me to heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And thank you, Bill Weiss. We'll see you next time as we keep looking up.